Hi, and welcome back to your second Xcode programming tutorial. So you made it this far and it's now time to start developing your first app and we're going to start with a very basic Hello World application. There'll be a label up the top that says Hello and then the text entered in a text field which will be entitled Name. It's a basic application but it proves a lot of various Objective-C, Xcode and iOS development concepts which will be useful in later development. Over in your hierarchy panel, you need to enter into your main storyboard.storyboard file. This is the graphical layout area of Xcode where you can design and create the user interface for your application. From there, we'll put the code into the viewcontroller.h and interact with it in viewcontroller.m. You don't need to worry about the app delegate. That merely communicates your app to the phone. So you'll never really need to use it in basic iOS development but we will discuss it in more detail later on. So enter main storyboard.storyboard .storyboard, and then you'll see a screen resembling the iPhone application screen. First thing you want to do is up in your identity inspector click on the little icon that looks a bit like a slider called the attributes inspector. <clears throat> Open that up and you'll see hopefully this. If you don't, make sure this triangle here is open and make sure over on the left in view controller scene you've got selected view. This is known as a scene. Each screen or view is a scene and you can have multiple scenes to form an application. We're just going to have a single scene or view and that will have a text field and a label. So you're probably thinking where do I get this text field and label from? Well it's fairly simple. Down the bottom you can see four tabs and if you can't just drag this up by hovering over the line up the top. You'll see there's a file template library, a code library, an objects library, and a media library. We want to go to the objects library, which is the little cube. Then press on the collection style view, or icon view, rather than this list view. Then you can see all your objects more clearly. As you can see, it probably looks familiar. We're going to drag in a text field, which is this, and to drag it in, merely click on it and then drag. You'll notice that you get these lines to help you place your text field right in the center of the screen or the corner of the screen. And these are really helpful in designing an application. When publishing an application, Apple do review your app and they want it to be spot on and right in the right place on the screen. So follow these guidelines and you won't go wrong. Let go to place it and then if you do want to move it, just click on it and start dragging it around. Let's put ours around just above the center of the screen. Let's make it a bit bigger by dragging on the little squares to the s each side of the text field. Drag it out and you'll notice that you get measurements as you go. And we're going to drag it out until we see a blue line on the right of the screen. There we go. And then stop. You'll notice it'll sort of grip to that blue line for a moment. And there we go. And as you can see it's now centered and it's the same length on either side of the screen. One thing you might have noticed is that this is an iPhone 5 screen. By default they are, and I'll show you how to make your app iPhone 5 and iPhone 4 4S compatible later on. But if you do want to make it by default an iPhone 4 4S application, click on View Controller, which is a little yellow symbol, and then where the size, which is selected as inferred, make it Retina 3.5 full screen. We're going to stick with the iPhone 5 display. The other thing we'll need is a label, so back in our objects inspector, let's drag in a UI label, and if you want any more information about these, just click on the object in the inspector, and then you'll get a bit of information, including what it's called. So if you Google UI label, you'll get a lot more information about it. So make sure the label center, and let's drag it out again, as we did with the text field. Now you're probably thinking, well, I want my label to be centered, and it's really easy to do. Just as you would do when you're creating a Word document or a PowerPoint, go under Alignment in Label, select Center. And there you go. Your label is centered. Let's make the size a bit bigger by clicking on the arrow keys. And we might need to drag the text field down a bit so that it's visible. Let's make the default text high exclamation mark. And we can do this two ways. One in this box under Text. Or we can double click on the label and start typing. 
Now, the user probably doesn't know what to do when they see this text field, so we're going to add some placeholder text, which is light grey text which will disappear as soon as the user begins typing in the text field. So let's make it enter name, and merely type this under placeholder. And as you'll see, it appears. And let's again center this. So what we need to do is also add a button so that the user types their name, clicks the button, and it will say hi and then their name. This is a simple iOS application, but a good proof of concept. And let's change the button's title by double-clicking on it, as we would with a label, to say hi. You can make it anything you want. I'm also going to change the text color of the label, because to be honest, that blue is pretty boring. So you can either click on where it says default under text color and you'll see the blue, or you can just click on the blue to open up the color inspector. Let's make it entirely black. So, now we can start programming the application. So, now we need to hook up some actions so that we can detect when the button is pressed and then perform the action of checking what the text in the text field is and then inputting that text into the label. Now, it's actually fairly simple, although it does sound complex, so don't feel too daunted by the task. We're going to open up our split editor, which is technically known as the assistant editor. To do this, go up into the top right corner and press on the button that looks a bit like a suit, although from a distance it does look like a face, but that's not important. Make sure that up the top here, you have select on the right hand panel, you have selected automatic, not manual. And then it is selected to viewcontroller.h, which you can change by just clicking on it and selecting viewcontroller.h. This is where we declare objects, such as a text field or a button, and actions, such as when a button is clicked. And we can also declare the global variables. So say we have a number, and we want it to be available throughout the whole app, we can declare it here. But I'll go into more detail on that later as well. After this line of code, UI view controller, the at interface line, we need to add a set of curly brackets. To do this, press shift and then a square bracket key on a Mac, which will bring up a curly bracket, then press enter, and Xcode will automatically add the closing bracket. If it doesn't, you can do this yourself. Now we need to connect up what are called outlets, and these are things that you want to change the properties of them. So a property might be the color, the actual text, and what the text is, the font of the text, uh, what it does when you click it, all of that sort of thing, hiding and showing them. So if you want to change any of the properties, you need an outlet, and that's what we need. We need to change the text of the label, so let's create an outlet for that. So in between the curly brackets, right click on the label on the left hand panel, or control click, and then you need to hover into between the curly brackets and you'll see a blue line that says insert outlet or outlet collection. Then let go and you'll see this dialog box appear. Make sure connection is as an outlet, type is a UI label, and the storage is weak. Don't worry about what the storage means, the type is obviously this is a label, a UI label, a user interface element label, and it's an outlet. And we'll call this label. Uh, actually, let's call it hello label. Give it a descriptive name. You'll notice what I've done here is I've written the word and then you obviously, well not obviously, but you cannot put a space in between names of variables, which an outlet is. So instead you use something called camel case, which means instead of putting a space, you just capitalize the next word, the first letter of the next word, as shown here. This is what we'll use a lot and it's a good practice to start performing. You'll notice that this is weak, IV outlet, UI label, hello label. Now, we don't need the storage to be weak, so just delete that bit of code. You can set this to automatically happen, and I'll show you how as we connect up our text field. So do the same thing, right click and drag. Underneath uh, the UI label, in between the curly brackets, it'll create another outlet. We're going to make the storage strong, we need it to retain the memory. Don't worry about what all that means, we just don't want that piece of text weak there. Because it sort of just gets in the way, and it's not necessary, and we also want the storage to be strong, which doesn't matter, for now. And we'll call this name text field. That's quite a descriptive name, so we'll know what it means when we need to come back to it later, without having to do mo too much searching. Imagine we had 50 labels and text field and buttons. It would be very complex if we didn't name them well. Connect that. And then we need to just add an action for when the button's clicked. 
So, again, right-click and drag on the button, and instead of putting it in the curly brackets with everything else, put it underneath the curly brackets, but before the at end line. Make the connection an action, not an outlet, that's very important. And make the name button pressed. You can call it whatever you want. To prove that, let's call it say hi. We want the type to be ID, don't worry about that, and don't worry about the argument. The event is touch up inside, and what it means by event is when do you trigger this action. And we want touch up inside, meaning the user clicked on the button, and then they let go. If we wanted them to just click on it and then it happens immediately, we could set it to be touch down. If we wanted them to touch the button and then drag out of the button, that will be touch drag exit. And we're going to do touch up inside, which is the default. For something like a slider, where you're changing the value of the slider, you will set it to be value change. But I'll show you that in a later tutorial. So connect that up, and now we have an action. Now zoom out, and in the left-hand panel, go to viewcontroller.m. you notice we're still in our dual editor. Let's leave it like that to keep it simpler, and so we can always reference back to these variables and check what their names are. So Xcode's automatically put in this action called say hi that we created in our .h file. So all we need to do here is put in the code to change the text of the label to the text in the text field. Let's add in a comment. To add in a comment, simply do two forward slashes and then type your line of comment. If you want a multi-line comment, do one slash and then an asterisk and then to close the comment, do an asterisk and then another forward slash and then put your comment inside there. Comments will appear in, but in green by default. I'll show you how to change your color scheme later. The benefit of a comment is it means Xcode completely ignores it. It's only there for your benefit, so that you remember what each thing does. So the first thing we need to do is get the text of the text field. Let's write that in. So we're pretty much just planning out our code here. Then we need to set the label to the text field. And we also need to make sure that the label starts with hi and then the text of the text field, rather than just the person's name. So to get the text of the text field, we can create a string. There are a number of different variables, such as strings, and a variable is, uh, as it suggests in like mathematical context, context a, a number or a text that can change and dynamically alter. So a string is a uh, text, pretty much. So let's create an ns string. It's called ns uh, in Objective C. In other languages, it might just be string. It might be something else. And then do asterisk. And that's just pretty much the naming convention. So if you want to create a string, before you name the string, you need an asterisk. And then we can give the string a name. We'll call this text field text. And then we want to put equals name text field. And then you get this box up here. That's called type ahead, and it's there to assist you when you're programming, so that you don't always have to type every word. Use it a lot to toggle between uh, different options. You can either click, or you can just use the up and down arrow keys. And to select, you can press tab or enter, or you'll double click on it. I'm going to be using type ahead a lot, because it's a lot faster, and you'll get left behind if you don't use it. So, it doesn't take long to get used to, just keep practicing. So, we're on name text field, that was the name of our UI text field. So press enter, and there it is. And then, obviously, name text field is just a text field. We actually want the text in name text field, so then do dot text, semicolon. Semicolon is like a full stop in English. It's just saying that's the end of that line. And what we're doing here is we're creating a string, and there's the contents of the string, and it is the text in the text field. Then we need to create another string. We need to create an NS string. And we'll call it a high string. And we need to do equals, open two square brackets, ns string, alloc. And we're allocating it to memory. And then we need to do init with format. And then you'll notice this blue box. And that's where we can put our string format. So do at talking mark, talking mark, end the square brackets, and put a semicolon. Inside these talking marks, type percentage at, comma, sorry, don't do comma, do high, comma, percentage at, and then outside of the talking marks, outside the red area, type the name of our string of our text field text, which is text field text. 
Let me move this over a bit so it's all on one line. So what we're doing here is we're creating a string, but we're giving it a format, and the format is hi, and then this string of the text field. Because the user's just going to enter their name in the text field. So say that's Jack. We don't want them to type Jack and then the label to display the name Jack. We want it to say hi Jack. So we're doing hi, and percentage at indicates that we want to reference the string after the comma outside of the talking marks. This at here just indicates that it's talking marks and text to Xcode, so Xcode knows what it is. And we need to give it some memory in the phone so it can deal with all this data that we're giving it. If we wanted to say hello, we could just make that hello. And if we wanted to say hi, then the person's name, and then welcome, we could do that by adding it, just by typing welcome afterwards. Percentage at just indicates as a string. Um, percentage D would be for an integer, which is a type of number, and I'll go into more detail in that later. And then we just need to make the hello label dot text equals high string. So we're just saying the text of the label equals high string. So that's it. We've done all our code. Now we can run our app and see if it works. We can do this in one of three ways. In the top menu, which you can't see on my computer, but it is there, you can click on product run. Another way is to just press this run button or command R. I'm going to click this run button. And you'll notice that we get a few messages in our status area and we'll get a build succeeded message. Then our app will run on the simulator. Now your simulator might be a bit different depending on what you've got installed so it might not look the same but it'll still work like an iPhone. If you don't have a home button in the top menu just outside of Xcode, as there normally is in this top menu where you get, say, your time and spotlight search and everything. You'll see there's iOS Simulator, File, Edit, Hardware, Debug, Window, and Help. If you want to go home, press Hardware Home, if for some reason the home button isn't showing up on your device, which it is for me, so I can just use that. So let's enter my name, Jack, and then click Say Hi. Now it says Hi Jack, and I can change that to Bob, and click Say Hi, and then it says Hi Bob. You'll notice that there was an exclamation mark at the start. So let's add in an exclamation mark after the person's name. All we need to do is add an exclamation mark after the percentage app, which is our string. So then let's try running it again. You'll notice that it says it's already running. So we want to stop the current run and then run it again. And let's enter my name. And I've just typed it on my keyboard on my Mac. That's why you're not seeing anything pop up on the keyboard on the simulator. And click Say Hi. And there you go, it works. So that's a basic tutorial on how to do a Hello World application. And we'll go into more detail on all of this and much more in our next tutorial. And we'll start looking at all the various things you can do with iPhone development. And really start building a real app to the point that we create an app that we're going to publish on the App Store. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, be sure to like and subscribe. And check out our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com, for lots more content. So thanks for watching and we'll see you.